to show number five of the Peter Feely experience. I've been Peter Feely. And I'm Craig Smith. I hear we have some new items, Peter. Tell us more. Right, okay. I, um, like the last show, mm -hmm. it seems to be a, a it seems to be a thing with getting ties. <laughs> so I've picked up a couple more ties. So I've got a nice silk tie here from Mr. Fish. Lovely and silky. Lovely. And uh, red tie. And as we'll see on the close-up picture, mm -hmm. it has the um, the famous peculiar to Mr. Fish on the on the label. All all his clothing had that on. Lovely. So Lovely. it's a nice wide, very peculiar, wide uh, clipper tie. Mm -hmm. And uh, to people that might not know, the actual the actual kipper tie, which is synonymous with um, Mr. Fish, coin actually came from it had a double meaning because they actually look like a, a kipper, a flat kipper. Well, yeah. And also Mr. Fish. Of course, there's the connection. So there's the connection. Mm. Mm. So that's uh, that's the first tie, and then I picked up this nice flower motif motif tie. And mm -hmm. it's a John Stephen of Carnaby Street. Wow. Another, Again, it, another kipper tie. Another kipper style tie, yes. Yeah. So I think this one is from about 1967. Right. And again, on the close-up picture, you'll get a better detailed look. So these these were the first one of the first kipper ties that came out in about 67, because these are quite popular in the yeah, 70s, yeah. weren't well, they? Well, yeah, yeah. Ties, yeah. Well, even to this day, you, yeah. you, you still yeah. get, you know, yeah. like, um, yeah. to, to a certain person, mm -hmm. they prefer a, a wider ended uh, yeah. tie. Yeah, I hear Brummies do like a good kipper tie now and again, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And last but not least, yep. um, recently, with regards to my page, The Psychedelic Clothing for Men, on Facebook, mm -hmm. a, a guy contacted, contacted the page saying that he'd uh, got hold of some fabrics mm -hmm. similar to what was used for the Peter Daltrey uh, kaftan yes. that I presented on show two. Right, okay. So uh, yeah. I, asked, I sent him a message and asked him, would you know, would, would he be interested in making me a kaftan mm -hmm. in a similar spec to the Peter Daltrey one, which yeah. he obliged. So I sent him some pictures, yes, some with all the spe specifications mm -hmm. of the uh, of the Peter Daltrey kaftan, as we'll call it. Fantastic! And I and, and, I, have it. and I got this. Um, wow! Shall so, I hold this up? Yeah. So the uh, the, the the actual guy mm -hmm. that made it, if I can pronounce his name properly. His name was Tim Ursulac and he's from Canada. Right, okay. Is that a Canadian, a French Canadian name maybe? I'm not too, well, it, I'm not too sure about that. Okay, well, but, I mean, it's, the actual, the pattern mm -hmm. is almost identical to that of what Pete Daltrey wore. Yeah. But the actual, the main colour is, is slightly darker mm -hmm. and the actual fabric is slightly different as well. Whereas the Peter Daltrey's was more of a fine cotton. Yes. This is actually more like a a thicker a thicker. Yeah, cotton. I can feel the weight. Yeah, it, yeah. It is definitely heavier. So, cotton. so yeah. what means now? What it means is that mm -hmm. I can wear this one mm -hmm. and you know keep the Peter Daltrey one for. Absolutely. This is the everyday. Uh, this is well, the everyday one. Well, kind I of. I think this is the one that I wear when I go down to the co-op for me pint of milk and. <laughs> Loaf of bread. Yes. See Peter at the cob wearing this. I also hear you've had a busy couple of weeks, so what's been happening over that time? Well, last weekend, um, me and Susie went down to London. Mm -hmm. We had a busy weekend. We mm -hmm. uh, got in two exhibitions. Right, what two exhibitions were there? So on the Friday, we went to the Fashion and Textile Museum in mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. They've got a an exhibition on called Swing in London, mm -hmm. a lifestyle revolution. Mm -hmm. So it's basically about Mary Quan, mm -hmm. Terence Conran. Mm -hmm. Now he was the father of Jasper Conran, the guy who ran uh, ran uh, Habitat. Is that right? That's that's correct. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it was it was about these people, the, right. the, the Chelsea. And of course, set. Mary Quan, obviously very yeah. famous. So uh, with regards to the Mary Quant, mm -hmm. there's some really nice pieces and one piece in particular which will be relevant to mm -hmm. our show. Mm -hmm. There was a, there was a, I took a picture of a jacket mm -hmm. that Mary Quant had designed in 1965 mm -hmm. and next to it was a skirt uh -huh. from 
from Granny Takes a Trip from 1967. But the interesting thing about the jacket was uh, Mary Quant was using Liberty Print William Morris fabric in yeah. 1965. Wow, a little bit ahead of her time because a lot happened in those two years, didn't it? Well, really? yeah, a hell of a lot happened. So. Well, mm -hmm. well, it predates um, Granny Takes a Trip by about 18 months. Mm -hmm. With regards to using William Morris Liberty Prince, so Mary Mary Quant was yeah there. She, she was there doing that yeah she was a true innovator mm -hmm. and also um, over the last couple of days a friend and um, an, an amazing collector Angie Smith mm -hmm. also mentioned to me that Bieber were making um, pieces in 1965 using Liberty right. Prince as well oh okay that's, so, that's pretty cool information to know that isn't so, it really? yeah. so the ladies were in front of the men when it came to the yeah absolutely that innovation yes And then on this Saturday, we, mm. we booked to go to the Mary Quant exhibition, mm -hmm. yeah. which was specifically more for the for the female. Right. But, okay. But just to see. It's the, never stopped you, Peter. Oh no, never never stops me. Never stops. It, it, the uh, innovation of the female clothing, mm -hmm. fabrics, patterns was just breathtaking, wow. and the way the way that the Vic, the V and A put it all together, which they always do when when they Imagine do it. Really. Yeah, when they do an exhibition, mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. tip top. And then on the Saturday night, we went to the uh, Rob Bailey's Beat Bespoke, which I mentioned on the last show. Yeah, yeah. Now Rob does puts on a really good show. Um, you know, a lot of the time, doesn't he? These Beat Bespoke's so are pretty banging. Well, yeah, you've got you've got um, the music. I think. <laughs> Yeah, we were at the Beat Bespoke on the Saturday night, mm -hmm. and it was all themed around the seeds. So there was that documentary that came out a few years ago, mm -hmm. and its um, first showing in the UK, which right. was really, really good, and also very interesting because there's a, there's a part in the in the documentary where Sky's on stage. Mm -hmm. This is Sky Saxon, the yeah, singer. Yeah, Sky Saxon. Mm -hmm. He's on stage singing one. Of the, I think it might have been a promo for Pushing Too Hard, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But He's actually wearing a jacket, it's a, a blue jacket, very satin, mm -hmm. and it looks to me like the same the same jacket that Brian Jones wore in 67, which was from on which was from Hung on You. Right, so they both you think got the same jacket from well, the same place well, at well, the same time. Like uh, it, they looked very, very similar. Yeah. So uh, once the documentary comes onto whatever whether it's going to be netflix or Some dvd services, yeah. when i can get it and yeah get a close-up and freeze frame it you know i'll be able to you know say for sure whether That's it fun. was well that'll make another show won't it and then after that there was the the, the actual band mm -hmm. well the mem the, the one member of the original scene so how many were in the band it's just one member who's an original and then what four or five other people yeah that made up the made up the band are they recognizable people from other bands or are they just uh, uh people well, got together? well there was um well the the original member was uh daryl hooper the organist and then there was a drummer from the the, the mark two of the seeds right okay and uh, the, the rest were made up of people on the, on the on the scene in America. Yeah, and yeah. They were good though, were they? Oh, they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was re it was re really really entertaining evening. <laughs> For me, the most enjoyable and most interesting part of the whole weekend, mm -hmm. we'd uh, arranged a meeting at the Chelsea Arts Club right. with Lloyd Johnson and Robert Orbach wow. from Law Kitchener's Valley. Mm -hmm. We'd been
been to the Chelsea Arts Club prior to that once where we met Lloyd Johnson mm -hmm. and had a lovely afternoon. Mm -hmm. It made it easier having, you know, knowing Lloyd and also I have had some correspondence with Robert Orbach mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I wasn't that nervous. Sure. So we get there, get some drinks, had some food uh -huh. and uh, it was just a really, really fun afternoon. Um, enhanced with Robert Orbach um, every now and then giving us excerpts from his memoirs that are hopefully going to get published at some point so we were getting some really yeah. interesting information. Well it's really good that you're, you're meeting these people who are there on the scene running these shops because the amount of stories they must have you know, to, to, to tell really, the amount of parties they've been at and the amount of scripts they've got themselves into, all based around these psychedelic clothes must be uh, immense. Well, well, yeah, you've got that, but also th these these men have got amazing memories, mm. and mm. they, they mm. help me to mm. try and get all this stuff absolutely. written down. Yeah, so absolutely. Because there's so, like um, I've mentioned before, there's so much that's already written. For whatever reason, I'm not trying to put anyone down, but there's lots of mistakes in what what we already know. Mm -hmm. So having people like this that. Are, still alive and still got amazing memories yeah. you know i feel that it's, it's so really to important. me to try and rectify and get all this information down he's the man yes yeah, so the uh, conversation was flowing great mm. so before we all departed mm. i asked both um, robert mm -hmm. and lloyd would they be up for doing doing a, a perfume garden show so we could go down to london and interview them both and yeah yeah both parties were very interested and very accommodating in doing this so hopefully yeah. in July when we go down for the radio show yes which we'll talk about in, a, in, so another, coming up. in another show mm. we'll, we'll go down and interview them both separately then and get more get more of their facts dig a bit deeper dig a bit deeper yeah yeah traveling back through the time vortex of this Pete's psychedelic world we are going back a week and to Leicester's a huge mod exhibition, Mods Shaping a Generation. There's more. The, the, um, the week before London, mm -hmm. I was invited to go down to Leicester and do mm -hmm. a talk. It was all around this, uh, like I mentioned in the show previous, the book that come out on, on mods, Mods Shaping a Generation. Mm -hmm. So I was asked to do a talk on on the my collection of clothing yeah in front of a live audience it was a packed show wasn't yeah it? very impressive and we will talk more about this mm -hmm. on show number six yeah yeah because so, um, i think we've got a, quite a lot to pack into show number five so what we're going to do is we're going to do show six and it'll be all specifically about that exhibition that exhibit, talk my, and, yeah. and, and all the questions and answers that yeah, you yeah. had to go through it was the, quite a lot actually wasn't it quite a, because we actually did our first on location. After. We did, we did, yes. After after a location, after show kind of uh, interview. Yeah, yeah. So this will be all in the. You'll be in, seeing this soon. In the net, in show number six. So. So Peter, on to the featured garment for the show. Well, um, some some of the eagle-eyed viewers might recognise this garment from show number four because I actually wore it. And I had a few people contacting me via the Facebook Psychedelic Clothing for Men page asking me what I was actually wearing. So I thought it'd be a nice way to yeah, absolutely. use it as the featured garment. And also, well, the actual garment itself is from Paul's Mail Boutique. Not Paul's Boutique. Paul's Mail Boutique. Yeah, there's a, yeah. Th there is a big difference. Big difference there. Because uh, in, I don't even know why I should say this, but the uh, well, I'll leave it to the viewers. Paul's boutique had a is a, is a contemporary fashion. Yeah, brand. nothing like Paul's male boutique. No, no, no. no. So, so, well, before I, before we actually talk about the garment, mm. Paul's Paul's male boutique started in 1959 by a married couple of Nathan and Susan Spiegel. They had they had, they eventually had two boutiques mm -hmm. at 39 and 47 Carnaby Street, wow. but I actually don't know what what each shop had. Whether one was um, specialising in shirts mm -hmm. and one mm -hmm. was specialising in other garments, but it was it was a male shop and it was on the coattails of John Stephen. And from what I've been told, the actual well I, from the clothing that I've I've got myself and from what I've been told. It was it was always classed as a higher end 
product mm -hmm. to other shops mm. like Lord John, Take Six, mm. and Paul's Nail Boutique I, actually is not as well known as as some of the other famous ones on mm. the Carnaby mm. Street. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, it's most probably the uh, label where I've, I've had through the years the most garments. Mm -hmm. So, which leads us on to this um, beautiful... It is beautiful. I mean, you say this is a little bit higher in quality, but they're all very high quality, weren't yeah, they? Yeah. But this is sort of the creme de la creme, really. Lovely. We'll do a close-up mm -hmm. so, so, um, mm -hmm. so the viewers can see it better. But yeah, all like when, when you actually own these garments mm -hmm. and you're wearing them yourself, and if you've got a bit of a understanding of the actual tailor inside of it mm, you mm. can really appreciate how well these are made it's incredibly sharp and and, it, and, mm. um, and that's hence why they they still look so good 50 plus years later if only you could see it in real life it is absolutely spectacular the detailing is just right now here's a close-up of the jacket that i wore for show number four it's got a narrow collar the actual fabric is a brocade and it's got a flower motif running through it. On the left hand panel you've got a ticket pocket with a flap over. On both side panels you've got the pocket flaps and underneath you've got the, the jet pockets. The actual sleeves themselves at the bottom of the cuff there's no extra actual detailing. Turning to the back, it's got double back vent and um, like the front it's all in amazing condition. And like the external, the internal part of the jacket is in extremely great condition. You've got a gold satin lining and you've got the um, label attached to the inside pocket, the mail by Paul. Next from the collection is the classic matching shirt and tie. Here we have a classic shirt and matching tie combo. The date of this shirt I'd say was between 1967 and 69. The fabric is of a brush cotton. We've got a nice flower motif running through both the shirt and tie. The colour is like a mustardy yellow with brown. The cuffs have got holes so you can adorn the cuff links which is a nice feature when wearing this shirt. The shirt is in really nice condition. We've got a label on, on all the shirts that I've had from Paul's Mail Booty, they're always on the back below the collar. As well as the label saying Mail by Paul, it also has the um, two addresses, two shops addresses on Carnaby Street. And here we have a classic adornment of any Dandy worthy salt in the mid to late 60s, a pair of crushed velvet black trousers. Mm. And Beautiful. It, yet again in fantastic condition and lucky enough these both fit, these trousers fit me. They've got the um, over flapping fastening with the two buttons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, inside on the pocket you've got the you've got the mail by Paul label. It's a nice cup of tie for us. This seems to be a running theme throughout <laughs> our shows. And luckily enough I have got a nice tie from mm -hmm. Paul's Mail Boutique. Mm. Silk tie with a lovely paisley motif. Ah, lovely. And before you ask, it hasn't uh, seen any parties with well, me it, yet. It's not been dumped in any red wine, which is lovely. No, no, no. But, or uh, tomato ketchup or, or no, cream. No, 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 it's an immaculate condition. It's a beautiful tie, it really is. I think uh, Paul McCartney would have uh, definitely loved to wear something like that. Well, probably did, not Do, 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 do. Last but not least from my collection of Paul's Mail Beauty, we've got the uh, classic cape. They've got me in a cape, would you believe? The clasps are a wonderful metallic lion's head. The fabric is a heavy wool, which would have been perfect for those winter nights mm. to mm. protect your Regency jacket. Ooh. If you'd like to show the, the viewers what it's like in, inside, beautiful lion. That is beautiful. Very similar actually to the rainbow striped fabric that was used in dandy fashions for, for 
jackets and trousers worn by Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And uh, again, you've got the the label. After show four, I was contacted by Paul Reeves. He mentioned that he enjoyed watching the show and he also mentioned that there was a slight mistake in the date I'd given for the opening and closing of his uh, booty, Universal Witness. It did actually open in 1968, but it actually stayed open until 73 and not 69 as I mentioned. I recently also read that before Michael Rainey opened Hung On You, 22 Kell Street, he actually started working for Celia Burtwell and Ozzy Clark at Quorum on Kings Road for about a year prior to opening 22 Cale Street, so that would have been sometime around 1965. So I suppose that gave him a bit of an insight into running a boutique. Hope you enjoyed show five and thanks for watching. And like we've mentioned in the past, if there's any of you out there who've got an interesting collection and would like to be featured on the show, please drop us a line. As we've been talking yeah. about my visit to the beat bespoke over the last weekend i thought it'd be nice to sign off with the opening track of rob bailey's new album so without further ado i'll sign out with this and see you soon <laughs>